as Mars met Venus in a temple while having Mercury in their presence, he devised a game of chess with new example, taking reason as king without preeminence, will for queen with great potency, thoughts he deems for his bishops, his knights praises of sweet eloquence, rooks are desires to flare up one's memory, pawns are servers striving to victory. Venus to exercise her glory desired for her rooks cautious reserve, for knights disdains of deserved return, her bishops glances of delightful sight, for her lady she took most pleasing beauty, and a king following the tale of love was honour his life ever in danger, for faithful pawns he took courtesy all armed and clad with ostentation. Mercury, always ready in his ways, painted the board with hues clear and dark, and made it time split into days and nights a box to bring the first enclosure. Crossing it, he divided it into four natures of times diverse, and then, in following his guides, of each part he made four equal parts. By dividing in this mode and the rest, the list adds up to four and sixty. The fields assigned and all the men at ready, the great warrior with his red standard decided to move as soon as required. Taking love as the name for the battle, he moved toward the field of the beautiful, the most valiant pawn in conquest. He moved two paces towards her. By this move, the king discovers reason and opens the road of will. The gentle lady, not lacking in spirit, carrying the green banner of hope and shouting, Glory, glory, covers my people with all blessings. Her pawn, courteous, well-tempered, moves up because beauty opens in the game of love, the first step. With a humble gesture for defence, her heart was pierced with the thrust of love. The first rule you must abide by is in this game that a piece once touched firmly, admitting neither debate nor confront by any player true, must be played. It falls to reason for a lover's thoughts, having chosen cannot freedom afford or doubt, but take full submission, thus the saying, courage and folly in every move, as once done, done it is. Good service received with courtesy made a new effort to accept it. Becoming lord of the spot where he took it, giving no thought whether she'd be annoyed, because the force that led him so to love her moved him to such glory of desire, ever following love until he found her. The enterprising one to get his way will not be stopped by turns or thrusts. So as to let beauty's fame shine through, seeing that service delights in courtesy, with great rigour she left her house to punish all those foolish fantasies. Caring not a bit for silly niceties, looking around as a crane scans the field, she kills the pawn who strutted proud. One who takes action must look to learn to not being hit by the aims he's taken. The next law that you both must abide by is that a piece taken will remain captive, and so will must take great care whom she takes, for she is a haughty dame. One who dodges the highest of hits remains the lowest, and so will learn the game. Understanding will get this gently if will won't placate reason, it stands to sense that the captured be felled. Will, as it is desirous to please, as soon as it can to the chosen lady, strives towards her in order to get his great praise with most perfect tongue. It was discreet person's mind to think ever to serve and not displease one who has been made lady of his heart. It is a fool who dares give insult against one who is due a vassal's homage. So as to keep the homage tower, the gracious lady returns to her place. For a knight, mostly one of noble breed, should not wish to stain an honest fame. So the one in love, when inflamed by passion, should not attempt to damage the goods of honour. And if he dared do so, as she flees, his plan is broken. For when it rains, if you seek shelter under leaves, believing yourself dry, you might get wet. The third decree tells all to retrieve to their castle or house of conquest, and should not want to ever again lose it, otherwise they ought to die with drawn sword, for will feeds such a fire as brings about continued strength. A lady is one who stuns all senses, because against one's wishes you will never conquer love, and cannot change until the wish desists. Reason finding sharper than a knife's edge, the lady whom he has most humbly loved, being left quite sad from such deception, and seeing the praises and services she disdained, for the value that appealed to her, his thought that conquers with sighs, to the fourth degree he sent a spy, one who would leap for his exaltation, must first lower himself a bit. The honesty of one who wants to attract great beauty if it will be divine, transmits disdain quite consciously, to cut off the vein of thought, for if he declines from virtue and would never limit himself, he will be undone by forbidding honour. By its nature fire is always burning, but water will make it dance back to measure. The next decree for this our game is that kings to their third house at first shot, keeping within measure, may jump in total freedom, and so they'll show that for the high road we must at times abandon the safety of the plain. Such model is expected from them, thus each one as limits are trespassed will err, but slightly if attention is paid. 
One in love, realising that pride and annoyance does not please the gentle lady, had to use reason to temper events, and reason was a willing and great ally. Her sweet speech that so seduces gave him with no need of fearsome sword to reach one whom the world adores. What great help and at very little cost, the sweet sound is of composite praise. A bitter treat encased within sweet crust is the adulator who flatters all senses, and flattering beauty approaches the deceit hiding beneath the, the flattery. From his eyes, to give her the pay of love, a sweet regard comes in place of an answer, thus healing the wound of her disdain. The eyes can look at the invisible and torment the dispassionate spirit. Because kings with invincible power cannot extend themselves beyond their reason, it is decreed that, by making the move possible, they can never checkmate or take, thus showing the world that in meeting punishment or revenge they must blend mercy with wrath and not overflow their understanding, for if they are great with their wings of potency, greater they will be by using clemency. Seeing the gaze on such fine countenance, the good desire serving under reason soon sent with great reverence his service to receive one who excites him. Affection written upon one's eyes awakens the heart for convenience of the lover where true love dwells. Conformity is the most certain bet as among lovers it feeds their friendship. As praise awakens the spirit and placates beauty with noble mien, with sweet regard hitting right on the heart, to praise in one hope finds closure, and to signify that the lover never lacks at any time the offered end of love, if the fountain of praise is never staunched, for flatterers make the lady so happy that discontentment appears as contentment. It was agreed that kings in whom such value sits should not jump over the others, but rather along safe roads they must go where robbers won't attack, for as they shine with our homage, leaving behind those who cannot help them if purely guarded they hurt themselves and their subjects nature wills for members to defend the head from hurt as that's where offense hits with brightness compensated by great love the eyes so lively in their gaze burned the happy song of spirited praise and humbly request wills response as they showed themselves they gave such effort that soon took as pay and recompense the rays of the sun that penetrated the will stars are the eyes for mariners to navigate who in this sea are drowning so that lovers may more clearly know the honesty carefully enacted by thought which lovers follow with courteous playfulness put up a gate by moving one pawn one step the enemies may spread their squadrons seeing for them that all hope has died discretion courteously combs what desire foolishly muses Another law, now numbering the eighth, that the valiant king, by retreating his person, may never, as he's bound by honour, skip so much for all the honour of his high crown, rather step by step, as is better seeded, make his way back without fear or ruin, and with the gravity that crowns such princes, for a discreet flight is better than to fall prisoner because of rash concerns. But lusting after amorous fruit, moves so the free will to enter the field of Venus in his fight. Of a courtesan he, de he tries to disdain, mostly because it was the undertaking of one who's burning in the fire of love. Great beauty, temptress of the wisest, seeing that the fire has made a flame of smoke, should alert all that poison is being poured. Beauty, seeing that will is aflame, taking her courtesy against disdain and threatening skittish fame for defence moves with grace, and having its night leap, offers battle against the lady's field, who attempted to combat shame. This is a fine example that disaster never follows one who consents the scent. Another law that must ever be followed, that the king not be treated like the rest. If any move is made against him, or if besieged by danger from the enemy, you must warn him before he's hit by an arrow. So disposes in the sky that star that endowed him with the royal ermine. The name of the king sows dread on enemy camp. He defends his faithful and bans the wicked. Now that war has broken between them, the great queen, calling the beautiful name of love, orders the return a pace and close of a knight to her defence, and to conquer by gathering her troops the courtly defeat of the enemies that was badly spread on the field. If one does not counter-attack at first, if he will oppose at last, will fail. Modesty is the gold on which beauty is mounted, that's why it sits near it in the castle, and abandons seeing that the flattery resorts to the courtly style, since he faints of dread. For honesty, unseen by all, is wounded in a chaste prison, and let the flatterer into the passageway, fear is suited to a bird in danger, as it will save it from being ensnared. Given that the king has been incautiously warned, the next law says he must move or be covered. The enemy is not lacking in daring. Disdain of foe might well devastate him. Prudently, then, he must stop the advancing danger. As the great lion, overcome by a weasel, we see each day, much as he dons the royal toga. We are all equal in death and birth, so equal must our fearing be. 
seeing how shame moves to assert her value to honour, courtesy and beauty. The knight, having weighed his options and no longer restrained, enters the fray and breaks that shield which fear of dishonest failing hides behind. It being the passion the lady praises, the winner in winning watches his shot, for often the foe in turning overcomes. Beauty, when she can do, do no more, looks without rage, keeping and defending her peace, and if praise moves or mingles his, beauty remains constant, unmoved. For if everything is of the nobler part, and it would seem that its disdain shoots out of its way, or so the people think, the discreet, seeing something out of proportion, says, he who burns his house must know what he's doing. Reason must be whole and not empty, most reasonable in all for everyone. That's why in the game each player takes his turn, the one first going for what seems laudable, then the other responding to such notable task. Each a chance to fire hope or fret, equal both in the concor concordant turns. Let no one think of winning to break this rule, for order must be kept in battle. The knight breaking his whip defeats shame and comes close to the honourable beauty that so, with joy and a smile, would die like the swan on a green field. If he dies happy with undignified death, the will should not open the battle as the knight's horse has become a meek lamb. You see daily death in this sort of fencing, so think highly of the pain of love. Having lost shame, which is the acme of honesty, fragrant as a lily, a strong fowl to break all villainous, moves outrage burning hotter than a cauterizer, against the flatterer give him such martyrdom as to erode with torment his false bitterness, and from such sweet potion he makes a soft salve, beauty must defend herself and be jealous for things the price the more they cost us. A pact is better, even if I have not said it before, that one cannot steal the power of another. Thus each must his weight calculate with its tear. Do not step beyond your rightful place. Rather, play just so your eye does not fault the one it looks at. A great race is planned if you would exchange your knight for a rook. A priest should shun all pomp, and so should the knight anything against his honour. Having broken up the squadron on the way to victory, the winner renews his efforts, with shouts and the blare of a valiant horn. These increase their courage and their strength. Will, seeing beauty sail against the wind, gives her the present so as not to stop the game of a new service to reinforce their friendship. The game of love must be played adroitly. One who would force a victory will only find defeat. The queen, seeing that Will so badly accompanies the service it left, dispatched a great disdain with strange foresight to do outrage to the trap she perceived, mostly as she thought and saw to shew with disdain the other company of the thought or will she had made. With an enemy feigns being abandoned, you must flee, for craft with craft is made. Adding a smart edict, it is ordered that the pawn should it play against pawn must do battle body against body, otherwise he cannot go further. But if he stands with heavy lance, Ahead it goes as the other one quits, and let it take effort to be carried to better part. Knights are reined back by honour, but villains are stopped only by force. Thoughts that scold and mutter as they see Will's desire and works, importuning honesty they plot, so as not to remain disfavoured and needy. These are the masters and apprentices to end all contrary ills. They are the sconces of the light and love. One who, in hurriedness, would hunt will take nothing and surely fool and shame himself. Outraged gesture, seeing that thought threatens honesty, forcing the strong to rise, delivers and is ready to die in the fray before an evil thought is conceived of honour, stating that whenever a sinful crime is done, it should not remove it one bit, since truth relieves it from guilt, the saying goes, he who bandages a hail finger being not ill can healthily unbandage it. Another ancient rule must be observed, that king may never another king combat, but rather each must remain near his men, because heads must never debate. For others are hitting and defending in their good order, the king must quietly command his host to overcome his foes. A servile act unworthy of royal pride is like two rams locking their horns. Will, seeing that so many times cruel disdain cruelly lies it fallow, in order to put a stop to its charges, disdainfully condemns and banishes it, while honour can celebrate shortly, and confronting it without a need for truce, to one who has so besieged her. One who thirsts for an ending must seek help by word, deed, thunder, lightning, and rain. The royal authority must never move unless the situation is grave and necessary. Thus honour decides to enclose, disdaining the adversary's thrust, of such service this is pay for a courtly style could flourish in such fortune and turn quite against him in such dire straits courtesy stops gravity and pomp in its hurried flight if assailed by a reverse of fortune is the king and all his power with him we want by clear law to see him die in sorrows as no clearing is expected for the royal crown and command presupposes excessive freedom and should he lose it all hope is also lost Dignity is bonded to the soul, and honour always outlives life. 
So that ever beauty may be served, goodwill, mindless of outrage, commands with infinite love the passage of his service, who is a graceful page, and he, allowing all advantage, with humble mien, invites courtesy to take his life as taxation. It is humility that will lighten, purge, and placate two hearts together, even if quite diverse in nature. Courtesy has but a limp purse, and will never turn away a gift, or if it did rebuff, his heart will ever pine for appetite, which is dry and thirsts for rain. And so, as soon as taken, it won't budge and make a castle out of a wee shack. But when it fails, he rues it more sternly. One who takes must think of a refund, for forcing ease it will be forced to compensate. Lacking the king people to defend him as his vassals have protected him so badly, he must then, as fortune declares, remain alone as his people have all been taken. A king without men cannot be thought a king, but virtue will recompense with comfort the cruel fate that has been pressed on him. In evil and in good must ever fortune be shared by king and men and all. In order to adjust all his efforts in one, Will will put his thought before reason, not caring a bit if something is lost like services or anything else. Leaving the words and relying on the gloss, it will serve that time just once. Whom, ho whom honour has taken a spouse, if a good will paints an image of love, it will never be undone by neither life nor death. The lady says, as her distinct voice sings, Be vigilant, honour, as she sees that the guard is kept by the eyes. Reading the red ink of love, they keep alert, for the hour seems late. In such a way, and with such vigilance is guarded, great beauty, girding itself with such sash, that her repute may be assured. This combat is won in such way that the victor flees and the loser waits. Another corroborating decree advises that should the king have no place to retreat or anyone to cover him as his enemy prospers to the point that he might be fatally wounded, as he dies he'll give his body as payment and his people will fall bannerless into servitude if he'd flatter his own life. In the perils of the bitter battle, more is saved by the eye than covered by the shield. Seeing beauty shield herself so strongly, privation as it moves the appetite, causes desire to free itself and come out to take the place of will. He's prodded by wanting but delight in his final cause, and if the end's delayed, his ardour may cease and take pause. All movement moves with some defect until arriving to its desired goal. As desire begins in its effect, let him come to the spot where will used to be free, because a straight way could lead to where beauty guides, and beauty with light of grace entered the third level of the delightful aspect of honour, which always involves danger. Beauty must cover itself with virtue if it will find worship in the world. But our game would now adorn itself with a new and strange style for one who'd look, taking the orb, scepter and the throne where mostly the queen requests her honour. Since it is said that she is worthier and stronger, she can quite well stroll the whole field, but cannot bend by neither fear or wrath. The haughtier you see your freedom, more should you be aware of not having it captured. Seeing that the queen is not flinching, the good desire of courtesy acts, inflamed with such vivid ardour that the greenest forest might burn without truce, for hope delivers him from toil a delight to revive one's forces, and making will the heir to final ugliness, the fire of love calls for green wood. If it is dry, the more it burns, the more it sours. Beauty carrying effort as a standard in order to punish the deceitful services. Moved to the front of disdainful disdain, she loses the greedy gain of honour. For the combats of love, if graceful, shoot their wares, and what rock will not give in to delightful acts? Better a no from a chaste one than a yes coming from a vicious one. If the ancients, to increase their brew with no regard to law or justice, from lowly blood and ordinary paste, strive to create a thousand queens out of malice, the laws of amorous malice say that the diamond more lawfully can be mounted and shine with great clarity. The faithful lover falls but for one, the ungrateful infidel does adore the idols. Will, honouring the sweet eyes and delicate gaze at it, as it looks, moves quickly. Its thought surmounts and remembers by the right of those in whom living love sparkles, by ardour that takes and leaves. It distillates liquor from his to soften his heart. With the reports tumbling within his head, love is one that engages through the eyes, but if it constrains, the part and the whole are menaced. Thought, always pursuing sweet regard, settling itself to attack the first, was taken and killed so it cannot bring any more damage, nor turn his will totally blind, for one who tries so hard, besieged by anxiety, to the point of bottling up the goods of honour and drowning his spirits right in front, honour will live as will will allow, only this will will bring good and bad. Since our style transports all power from loving kings to beloved queens, just as between kings it is not licit to strike, so will the queens behave, still they may be, may be battled against by others and taken should they lack an escort. This is their only limitation, and for this reason the law of our school says that the queen should never be alone.
good value finds no discomfort from thought spent in such an article, but with an effort from desire it chooses and fights against disdain, the support of honesty, and disdain raising its voice clearer than barrel, it now frets and trebles, seeing pleasure within its, in its own epistical. Perfection takes form from its end, and thus the love of good gains shape. Honesty with such word forms its great clamour, shouting, O oh, lofty Venus, since your virtue cannot reform mine, and your help fails me at this juncture, my poor value loses its shine. Seeing that yours does not conform itself with mine, my virtue as it flees leaps out. If such frights are not good for kings, they are still natural and, and sustains its being. Mercury says that now, as the queens comprehend so, as they can all and command all, if by misfortune their enemies take them, their armies retreat and flatten, therefore they should be guarded lest they be deceived, because by fear they cannot defend themselves, or just with their own effort they will neither thread nor unthread. Shame and fear are virtues in the lady, as they are prevention in one and contrary to great fame. Mars, the prince inflaming our hearts, so as to triumph in such high conquest, took honour that claims to be above all things, and offered it quickly to good value. And this, climbing to the degree offered by the beautiful flower with amorous flame, sacrifices the fruit of love with great fanfare. In the moon lies the point of this eclipse, and to understand it is to understand the apocalypse. See you next time.